dear player, we are super grateful that you bought our very first game, Ball of Porcupine. We sincerely hope it can give you even a little bit of joy and excitement that interacting with all of you has given us. From the bottom of our heart, thank you. Alright, thank you so much for joining me for Fall of Porcupine. I played the demo a few weeks ago, and that looks like a lot of fun. And so here we are on release day! <laughs> Fall of Porcupine is a story set in a healthcare environment. It contains plot points that deal with issues relating to stress, illness, death, and self-doubt, among other things. Please pause the game if you feel unwell and consider contacting family, friends, or a professional for support. Oh no, am I gonna cry? I will probably cry. Everyone beware. I cry at puppy commercials, so this is gonna get me in the feels. Though this is editing me, I strongly recommend that you watch the demo before you actually watch the first episode because the this picks up right where we left off in the demo, so you're gonna miss a little bit of backstory if you don't watch the demo. So, I'm linking it. Go watch it. Alright, and then come back. Didn't sound good. Hey, Finley, nice to see you at last. Why the long face? Oh, no reason. I... I wasn't expecting to run into my houseplant here. Who were you expecting? Your washing machine, perhaps? By the way, we need to talk about her. The way my pot vibrates when you set her to spin. No. I don't know. I think I'm looking for something. Oh, really? What would that be? I have no idea. But... It was important. And I think I've lost it. Well, if you don't remember what it was, it couldn't have been that important. I'm sure it can wait, buddy. You think so? Of course! Come on, relax. Just take a look at this meadow. The lush grass, the bright warm sun, and this wonderful, soothing music. How can you worry when you see that? Yeah, it's, it's good to be out in the sun. I'm not sure I hear any music, though. Oh, yeah, wait a minute. There we go. Better? I like this. Hulamundo! Just let your leaves jangle. Leave your worries by the wayside. Yes, yes, I should do that. I just need to relax a little bit. Great! That's what I want to hear! Last things always turn up eventually. So, go find yourself a comfy spot. Make yourself at home. I might do that. 
I'm going to have a look around. It's so beautiful here. I want to pick out my spot carefully. The choice is all yours. Just relax your frazzled feathers. That's the main thing. Enjoy, Finno. Well, hello there, buddy. We meet again. How goes the relaxation? Did you find the person you were looking for? <clears throat> it's... Uh, it's going quite well. It's really nice here. I haven't been outside like this in a long time. It's easy to forget how much good it does you. Word. Once I find my spot, I might just stay. That sounds great. So, what are you going to do now? I don't know just yet. Who's the big guy behind you? What? Oh, hey. That's Hugo. We went to university together. He's great to climb around on. I used to do that all the time. He won't let me anymore, though. Not since I got aphids. <laughs> eh, want to give it a try? Sure. Why not? But I don't think I can get past the giant flower. Hold on. We'll have that sorted out in no time. See? No problem at all. No problem. The whole ground was shaking. Hugo's quite ticklish. You need to be careful when you climb on him. And don't break any of his leaves off. He prides himself on his great foliage, you know. Hello, Finstar. Up here. Oh, how'd you get all the way up there? I am a plant of many talents. I'm not allowed to climb here anymore, so I had to come up with another solution. What do you want to do? I don't know yet. Maybe I want to dive into the water? Seriously? I thought we were just going to chill. Besides, it looks pretty deep. I think it is. Yeah. Maybe what I'm looking for is down there. I just, I, I just want to check it out. Well, whatever floats your boat, little fella. I'm more a partial shade kind of guy. Besides, I'm prone to overwatering. Chicken. You made it after all. You, you, you know me. I never pass up a good time. Are you all right? I'm, I'm going to catch a c c c cold. Then you'll need to take care of me. Go shopping, go shopping for me. Do my taxes. The water's lovely. I don't know what you're going on about. 
No! I don't like water! So, you want me to stop watering you? That's different. You wouldn't understand. It's a flower thing. Actually, maybe we could get out of here? Alright. Isn't that the statue from the town square? Are you in charge of the water here? Can you hear me? I'm looking for something. Maybe you've seen it? Hmm. No response. How rude. The Vinmeister! There you are! What took you so long? You're looking better again. Hey! Look at me down when you're down at the beach. That moment when the excess water disappears. And you feel the first tickle of photosynthesis kick in. There's nothing like it, man. I just can't get enough. I forget everything around me. Who are you again? Finley. You live with me. Tina gave you to me. You're from her flower store. Finley, fondly, dingly, dongly. It's all the same to me right now. Oh, yeah. This place seems kind of familiar. Have you been here before? Maybe, but not like this. You sure do have some strange notions. So, have you found what you're looking for yet? No. But I don't think I'm actually looking for something. I'm looking for someone. Well, congratulations! You have found someone! Your very best flower, buddy. Now, grab yourself a drink and lie down on the sand. We haven't had a vacation in a long time. I... I'll be right there. Maybe I'll find who I'm looking for here on the beach. Alright, but don't get sunburned. After all, I'm not an aloe vera. Nice to see you here. Do you happen to know where... Where Mr. Arndez is? Mr. Arndez. I was looking for Mr. Arndez. He's a patient of ours. And he... Disappeared. I was taking the elevator. And... Something... Went wrong. I have to find Mr. Arndez. Otherwise, something will happen to him. Sorry, Ingrid. You know how much I enjoy our conversations. But I got a feeling something's happened to Mr. Arndez. We'll catch up again soon, I promise.
Mr. Arndes has to be here somewhere. Hello? Mr. Arndes? Can you hear me? Hello? Is someone there? There are boxes full of documents and folders on the old hospital bed. Strange place for an office. I guess everyone has their own take on interior design. The bed almost looks like an actual desk. Maybe I should... Uh... There's someone back there. Mr. Arndes, is that you? Huh? Blood. It's still fresh. Mr. Arndes, you're bleeding. Don't move. Ugh. What? Who? Who are you? Just stay calm. I'm gonna help you. Is anyone there? We need some help here. Hello? Good morning! Hope you're feeling well again. Glad you're coming back to work today. Maybe we'll have time to chat, and then you can finally tell me all about what happened. Man, another of those weird dreams. Feel really groggy. Feels like I haven't slept at all. Maybe I should just give up sleeping altogether. Ugh. Okay. Nothing else for it. Time to get up. That's a boo boo on his head. What a dream. Wake up from Finley's nightmare. There you are, just standing there in your pot as if nothing happened. You've given me quite the restless night. It's all right for you, you don't have to go to work. If I find beach sand in your pot tonight, there'll be trouble. I used to game with my roommate every night when we were at university. I always kicked my butt in the one-on-one -on -one viking battles. I figured I could treat myself to some gaming after work. That chance. I haven't touched the thing since I moved in. That's cool. I got a heap of mail when I first moved here. Porcupine isn't big, but it was still kind of nice. A bus timetable, a sightseeing guide, a trial subscription to the daily newspaper. Maybe I'll become a newspaper reader one day. Then I can buy a pair of glasses like Ingrid's. That bike's been there ever since I moved in. 
So either someone moved and forgot it, or it's not biking season here. If it's still there come winter, I'll take it with me and get it fixed up. Morning, Finley. Running late? Hey, Susie. Yeah, I had a restless night. Crazy dreams. Oh, yeah, I know what you mean. Most nights, I don't dream at all. But sometimes, I dream that I'm running. Just on the spot. For no reason. That definitely comes from work. I've heard Lewis Colbert's having trouble sleeping, too. He's worried about the store. People just don't buy as much stationery as they used to. I mean, I'm not complaining. Less for me to carry, right? Are you doing your rounds already? Come on, you know me better than that. I'm finished already. Just wondering what to have for lunch. Lunch? You really have an odd routine. Well, the post won't post itself. True, but I should post myself to the hospital, that is. Don't let me stop you. Don't get lost now. That's what happens when you don't know the town as well as I do. There's a note here. Unfortunately, the citizen's bus is out of service until further notice. We ask for your understanding. Look on the bright side. With fuel prices the way they are, walking's the better option anyway. We hope to see you traveling with us again soon. Suits me just fine. Why did I buy a monthly pass if the bus only turns up once a month? From here, I can get to the old town and the high street. Weird what passes for a high street in a small town. All I know is that penis store is there, but I should check out the street when I'm free sometime. The old town lives up to its name, at least. Small, crooked, old houses. The town hall and the town fountain. And Gilbert's, of course, the best and only pub in Porcupine. And best of all, both routes lead to St. Ursula's Hospital. Hey, kid. Road's still closed. Can't let you through here. Why is the road closed? Construction work today. We're building here. Stones, wood, steel, cement. Ah, oh, I see. So that's what building is. Yep. Someone like you wouldn't understand. That is that you on the poster? You trying to insult me, buddy? No, I'm just saying. Watch out. I'm not standing here because I love dust and drills. And I won't let newcomers like you give me sass from the sidewalk. Alright. Sorry, I didn't mean it that way. I should hope not. The guy on the poster looks nothing like me. Yeah, you're right. Who'd confuse you with that guy? Only someone who needed their eyes tested. That's what I'm saying. How do I get to St. Ursula's Hospital? No access via the high street today. It'll be closed until at least tomorrow. You can still get to the hospital via the old town, though. Well, if you still want to go there today, head through the old town. Oh. It's okay. I'll look for another way. Yeah, you do that. Oh, man. It's so clear. You can see the glow... It's so clear. You can see the glow milk woods from here. I like this morning air in the fall. Too bad I don't have more time. I wouldn't mind grabbing a coffee and eating my breakfast here.
me old goat. goat. Goodness, you're a fast walker. Are you being chased by a rolling boulder? Good morning. No, no, I'm just running late. Late for an appointment, is it? You know, the more time passes, the less I believe in the idea. What idea? The idea of being late. Are you new here? I've never seen you before. Yes. Actually, I started at St. Ursula's Hospital a few weeks ago. Oh, you're a doctor. Yes, well, almost. A junior doctor. That's marvelous. People like you are just what Porcupine needs. My name is Aldell Von Winterstein. I'm Porcupine's oldest citizen. I've seen many people come and go. So, some were in a hurry. Some have stayed to this day. You, I'm guessing you're the hurrying type. Am I right, Doctor? Yes, but only because I need to get to work. Well, one should never throw rocks into the Russian rapids. When you have a moment sometime. I know a lot about this town. You can always ask me if you have any questions. I might just take you up on that. Thanks for the offer. I see it as my calling. But for now, full steam ahead. There are younger folk than me to keep alive here. Oh my goodness. That's Gilbert's. Pretty good place to go. Not that there are any alternatives, really. I'll be back here soon enough. Good morning, Julani. Long time no see, Finley. Yeah, I was laid up in bed for a while. Thought as much the band-aid gives you away. Everything good with you? I'll be alright, yeah. I'm sure you will. You want to cool you want to cool that lump on your head with a nice cold drink. Just come by any time, okay? Thanks, Julani. I might take you up on that. We're running late and talking to everybody. That's the big town fountain. The statue of Ninoslav Honoratus, the founder of Porcupine. What's up, Nino? Why isn't the water running? Seems to be broken. This rusty old truck wasn't here the last time I came to work. It's locked, too. Suspicious. What are you hiding, rusty old truck? Treasure, perhaps? Dead body? Maybe even ten dead bodies. Is there super secret alien technology inside you? Are you the truth of all things? The answer to the great questions of the universe. Come on, reveal your secrets. There's a bike and vending machine. Does that let us? Does he acknowledge it in any way? Then, then you're letting me down. Okay. There is a plaque on the tree. This ancient bark has stood here since the foundation of the town of Porcupine. Ninoslav Honoratus, the founder of Porcupine, planted it himself. He was known to misplace and lose things. He reached this place after wandering for 100 days. 
He founded the town and built himself a house. And on the day he wanted to move in, he lost his keys. Forty days later, he found them on this very spot. Sounds like something I would do. Bay Nurse Bill's Hospital is this way. Good morning, Mr. Bus Stop. I love to have been I'd love to have been hopping off here some time ago. Coffee in hand, nice and relaxed. Well, maybe tomorrow. You can't slack off every day, Mr. Bus Stop. St. Ursula's Hospital. You squeal, we heal. <laughs> so horrible This statue's out here every day. From dawn to dusk, from rain or shine. Never complained. How do you do it? Regular sleep, probably. Balanced meals. Exercise three times a week. Well, a guy can dream. This hospital isn't huge. Still, you can get lost here from time to time. Not a problem until you actually end up on the operating table. That's why you should always pay attention to the signs, kids. Again, I highly recommend you watch the prologue before you watch this, even though by now you've, you're a little late. Uh, cause... <laughs> you said something different before, and it kind of plays in. Pretty well. Alright. good old vending machine a handy source of, of breakfast or an end of shift reward of course it's been broken ever since i started here but hey it's important to have constants on life still i wouldn't say no to a chalk dog right now every morning they gleam through the glass laughing at me just like they've been doing since before i was even born and still will be long after i'm gone They'll outlive us all. Thousands of years from now, alien beings will dig up this vending machine. What was this machine's purpose? A primitive civilization created it. That's what they'll ask themselves. Perhaps with their advanced technology, they'll be able to actually get at the tasty treats. You've been a lot. You've got a long way to go, vending machine. Oh. <laughs> Morning, Gato. So you're back, huh? Morning, Ingrid. Yes, my injury is healing up nicely now. I heard about your accident, of course. Everyone's heard about it. Everyone wants to know what happened up there on the fifth floor. Yeah, me too. You want to hear my theory? This might sound a bit complicated, but the evidence speaks for itself. I've thought it through several times and it all makes sense. So, what do you think? I've only known you for a few weeks now, but it must have something to do with you, specifically. Really? What do you mean? Well, we have a name for that kind of thing here in Porcupine. A sophisticated technical term that aims to define the social and the anthropological characteristics of the phenomenon. What? The term is... Klutz. Just kidding, kiddo. <laughs> that was Mr. Arndez. Old Duffer's still alive. 
making himself cozy in his bed and on your ward again. Okay. I'm really glad to hear that. You've only been here a short while. But because of that night, people know you now. You're the boy who survived. Very funny. <laughs> but seriously, people might still have questions for you. Just so you know. Better be prepared. Anyway, my coffee's getting cold. And you need to swing your butt on over to your ward. On the third floor, in case the dent in your noggin caused more damage than we thought. I know where my ward is. That's good. Hop to it, then, before Dr. Kowalski rips your head off. You're right. I'll get going. This is the cafeteria, but I don't have time for breakfast right now. I can already feel Dr. Kowalski's icy breath on my neck. Then again... Nah, better not risk it. Gonna risk it for a biscuit? Wait, 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 wait. Wait, come back. I'm not done with you. Oh, dude moved fast. Did you run into a wall? No, I had an accident here a few weeks ago. Ah, you're the new guy. Frankie? Philip. Franco. Finley. You're right, right. Heard about your little episode. Seems you might quite the scene. Yeah. Look on the bright side. With how rotten everything is up there, you're lucky you didn't fall through the floorboards. You have landed right in our ward on the fourth floor. I'm Anton, nurse upstairs on internal medicine, too. Anyway, gotta go. Mind your step, Funky. I feel like this place changed a little. I'd best keep my hands off the dusty old files. Hold on. Is that my name on that? No, Finley, pull yourself together. You're seeing things. Finley, half an hour early. That's refreshing. Just what I like to see. Um, early? Really? Of course not. You're horrifically late. Again! Let me guess. The bus didn't come. Yes, I'm sorry. I... The bus is unreliable. It can't be trusted. Find a way to get here on time before we decide you cannot be trusted. Got it? Yes, got it, Dr. Krawski. If it's not too much trouble, we'll start our rounds in room 301. So here's Miss Martin. Good morning. You're very late today. Ah, Miss Martin, a woman after my own heart. Miss Martin's in a hurry to get home. That's a good sign. But you still need some rest. Okay, Miss Martin came to us yesterday with the pain in her upper abdomen. She was also complaining of heartburn, nausea, and a loss of appetite. Yes, but the real reason was a sharp pain in the heart. I panicked and called the emergency doctor. I was in so much pain, I could hardly move. That was exactly the right thing to do. Anyone have any ideas? Mia? Me? Well... Come on, spit it out. And, uh... Yes? Ulcer? A stomach ulcer? 
Is that a question or your answer? My answer. Bingo. The reason for the symptoms is a stomach ulcer. We still have to investigate the cause. So far, there's no indication of gastritis or anything along those lines. Okay, Miss Martin, we'll probably keep you here one more night. We'll check your readings again later. Try to relax. Finley, you'll take care of Miss Martin's medication later. Let's continue on in room 303. Chop, chop. Look sharp. You said 303, right? I didn't make that up. Well, Larissa, how are we today? Quite okay, Dr. Ski. Good to hear that. Can you take a few deep breaths in and out for us? Like last night? That's right. Careful. Sorry, Dr. Kowalski. No problem. That was very, very good. How's it going? Do you want to tell the other doctors why you're here? Yes, I can do that, Dr. K. Well, I was down at the school with the others. We were at the back of the skate park. Can't skate that well. I only just got a skateboard for my birthday. But I definitely want to learn. My board is super cool. It has green wheels, and the grip tape is all black and brand new. I've heard other skaters scratch that board up on purpose to make it look cooler. I don't get that. My board has a big picture of a robot on the bottom. It's way too cool. I don't want to scratch that up. Very good. But were you all... What? What were you all doing down at school? Ah. Well, um... It was like this. My buddy Christo stole some cigarettes from his stepdad. He said if you want to be a good skater, you gotta smoke, too. It's all part of the deal, he said. I really didn't want to, but I didn't want to be a chicken, you know? I was still out of breath from practicing. He lit the cigarette, and I took a drag. Super gross. I don't get why grown-ups seem to actually like those things. Anyway, I took a drag. And all of a sudden, I couldn't breathe, I coughed and coughed, but couldn't get any air. And then I passed out. Luckily, my friend called an ambulance quickly. So, yeah, that's it. Thank you, Larissa. You explained it all very well. Well then, care to share your opinions, my valued colleagues? What do you think, Finley? Hmm. I know, Dr. Crossy already told me. Don't give it away, Larissa. Oh, okay. Sorry, Dr. Ski. <laughs> asthma. It could have been an asthma attack. Yes, asthma sounds logical. Indeed, logical and correct. What a stroke of luck. Without the help of my, uh, without the help of my assistant, Larissa, you probably wouldn't have thought of it. <laughs> Good, Larissa. Keep doing your breathing exercises, but don't overexert yourself. You got it, Dr. Kowalski. Okay, the last stop for today is room P33. Oh, and Finley. You already know this patient. It's Mr. Willie Arndez. I assume the name rings the bell. Mr. Arndez, yes. He's a permanent guest on our ward. Mr. Arndez is an old-timer. Even discounting his recent injuries, his head isn't in the best shape anymore. So act accordingly. We'll just wait for everyone to join us. There's gonna be a joke about owls being really fast. I 
everything will be just fine, Mr. Arndez. This matter is very important to me, and we'll ensure it's resolved quickly, and you can rest assured of that. Ah, Dr. Korowski. Nice to see you. It's a lawyer, isn't it? So, a weasel lawyer? Is that what that is? The joke we're going with? Good morning, Mr. Hydrick. To what do we owe the honor? Why, Mr. Arndez, of course. I heard he was on the mend. I have to say, I'm very relieved. The poor gentleman has been through a lot. This incident has been of a great concern to us over the past few days, as you know. I know that. Yes. I've been sweating blood myself. The whole thing is rather unseemly from an insurance perspective. But I was also very worried about our patient, of course. And let's not forget our junior doctor here. I hope you're back on your feet. Ready to throw yourself back into the fray. Yes, I'm doing well. Thank you, Mr. Heinrich. It's great to have you back. Truly, I admire your dedication. It goes without saying that I don't blame you for the accident. Nobody at St. Ursula's does. St. Ursula itself is responsible for this accident. As such, we will be taking personal responsibility for the matter. I've arranged for Mr. Arndes to receive the very best treatment available. That's why we've secured him a place in the best rehab clinic in the country. He'll be well looked after there, around the clock. The rest will also help with his age-related dementia. Speaking of which, I'm glad I bumped into you this morning, Dr. Kowalski. Oh, really? Yes, indeed. Would you do me a favor and assess Mr. Ardez's condition later today? If you can discharge, if you can discharge him with a clear conscience, let me know. Then I'll arrange the transport right away. Understood. I'll take a look and let you know. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well then, I won't keep you any longer. All of you, all of our time is precious. Oh, and if you need extra hands on your team, see what I can do. A healthy infrastructure is essential. We don't want our staff overworking themselves and then calling in sick. Good luck. Here's to a successful day. Yes. Anyway. Good morning, Mr. Arndez. You know, my daughter looks exactly like you. Yes, yes. Well, isn't she the lucky one? How are you feeling today? I just told you, didn't I? I'm afraid that must have been before I got here, Mr. Arndez. Well, what are you doing here, then? I'd like to find out how you're doing and take a look at your dressings. When's lunch today? Right after this. Okay, then. Go ahead. Finley. Hmm? Yes? Mr. Arndez suffers from dementia, but is still relatively fit, as you can see. He injured his leg as a result of the aforementioned incident. He also suffered a moderate concussion. Finley, would you be so kind as to change Mr. Arndez's dressing? It's important to keep the dressings fresh. We can also take a look at the wound. You want me to change the dressings right now? You can ask Mr. Arndez if he wants to do it himself, if you prefer. He can't be any worse at it than you. Alright, I'm doing it. Good morning, Mr. Arndez. I'm very pleased to see you. Hmm, do I know you? Yes. Maybe. There was an accident, do you remember? I want lasagna today, but hold the salad. Can't stand all those leaves. Mr. Arndez. Finley, what are you doing? Do you want me to bring you some tea and cake? All this stress has been hard on Mr. Arndez. Now let him rest and do your job. I just wanted to... Okay. Your patient is in your hands. Press and hold the button shown on the screen to administer treatment. Make sure you only press the buttons shown on the screen. Be as quick as possible and don't release any of the buttons as long as they are displayed. Oh, wait.
look at that! That dressing's maybe rather average, but I'm happy with the condition of the wound. I'll be back to you later to check your readings. But there's a chance we'll be able to discharge you very soon. That would be nice, Miss Kowalski. Doctor. No, no, I'm not a doctor. I'm just an absent-minded old fool. Oh, dear. Okay, we're done. Mia, Finley, come with me and I'll give you your task for today's shift. Mr. Arndez, I... Give him crack, give him cree and bubble and blubber. Sorry? Sure you are. Well, time for me to get back to work. My jam won't make itself. And I can't be late tonight. Get well soon, Mr. Arndez. I wish you the best of luck. There you are, back to full health, I trust. Yes, all good. I'm glad to be back at work again. In that case, I look forward to a smooth shift. I'll activate today's tasks in your app. The walls are crumbling, but they still find money for digitalization. Still don't believe in these electronic patient records, but Hydric and the Theobald, but Hydric and Theobald won't stop singing their praises. We've done a test run and some updates, so the wards have to use this app now. The data protection benefits are indisputable, but I haven't seen any evidence of it saving us time. Anyway, open the patient app on your smartphone. Everything else should be self-explanatory. I don't think this is a terribly bad idea. <laughs> Roman Hydric does the financial stuff in the hospital, but not... It's not for me at all, but maybe he enjoys it. He asked me about the accident today and seems worried about me and Mr. Ardez. Today I entered a hospital as a resident for the first time. Ingrid welcomed me and roughly explained everything to me. He's the heart of St. Ursula's. I'm just concerned about her snacking and coffee consumption. Susie is the only male character... Nope. Susie is the only male carrier in Porcupine. She knows everyone, perhaps a little too well. I get the impression that she's a little too nosy for her own good. Giuliani. I noticed that it does this thing. It did it to me in another screen, too. Uh, it doesn't let you scroll up and down. And, like, it gets stuck. And clearly, <laughs> it's supposed to scroll. Anyway, Gilbert's the only bar in Parcupine. I've been there once or twice already and had a reasonably good time. Giuliani once got into an argument with someone called Ralph, but I guess that's to be expected when you're the owner of a bar. Plus, he's actually pretty laid back. Adele. Adele von Winterstein. Graceful, elegant, eccentric. I met her this morning at the market. She seems to know a lot about Porcupine's history. I never much cared for history myself, but I'd love to know a bit more about my new hometown. If I find time, I should talk to her some more. Mia started as an intern on the same day as I did. It's her first job, too. But I'm impressed by how much the radical knowledge she has. I think I can learn a lot from her. Carl is a nurse on my ward. He approached me on my first day after talking directly to Dr. Kowalski. He's been at St. Ursula's for a long time and knows his stuff very well. I'm very happy to be able to work with him. He's well known and loved by most people in Porcupine. He took me to Gilbert's. There, I met some new people from Porcupine. Pina. I met Pina on my way to work. She's very nice and has a flower shop in Porcupine. And she's my first real contact here. Kowalski. Dr. Kowalski is my senior resident. She heads Internal Medicine 1 on the third floor. And I'll tell you how it is. I'm a little scared of her. During my first few days, she made a lot of demands on me. I tried to live up to her standards, but I don't always succeed. Alright. You're fair enough to give me that look. I, uh...
All right. The file tells you who to treat and what they need. Child's play, really? Any questions? I don't think so. Then you have everything you need. Report back to me when you've completed today's task. And make sure you don't collect any more band-aids on your face by the end of your shift. I'll keep an eye on your work and evaluate it. Do try to make an effort. Hello. There you are again. Nice to see you again, Miss Martin. I'd rather we make it somewhere else next time. Yes, I prefer that too. How are you? Oh, you know, I've been a little restless lately. Sometimes it feels like I can't breathe properly. I have bad stomach pains. Do you have heartburn? I always have heartburn. I've had it for years. Yes, a stomach ulcer's no joke. I've been through a lot of stress in the past few months. I've had a lot of arguments with my daughter. And my job's got me pulling my hair out. I'm very sorry to hear that, Miss Martin. Do you think the ulcer is stress-related? Hmm, no, I don't think so. In fact, you're very unlikely to develop an ulcer just from stress. It's true that stress isn't good for the stomach, though, and it can give you heartburn. Can you do anything about it? It's lucky you came to see us so early. That's good. Last night's test show you have a bacterial pathogen in your stomach. That's probably what's causing the ulcer. I'm going to start by prescribing you some medication. Whatever you think will help. All right, let's see then. Prescribe the right medication. Try to get all the patient's readings to their optimum levels using a little, as little medication as possible. Each type of medication affects two different readings. Once you're satisfied with the medication you've chosen, sign the prescription. Do three pills. All right, treatment complete. A. Yay! Well, that should have you feeling better in no time. Someone will come and give you your medication before lunch. Until then, try to get some sleep. Yes, I should rest my eyes. I was up all night with the pain. Get well soon. I'll see you later. Thank you, and good night. Free with our guy with the asthma. He was being naughty. Hey, Doc. What's your name? Hey, Larissa. I'm Finley. I'll be examining you over the next few days, okay? Nothing to worry about. Oh, okay. Whatever you say, Doctor. I like to listen to your lungs. You mean you want to put that freezing cold thing on my chest? I'm afraid so, but don't worry. It's not that cold. I don't know. Actually, I guess it is a bit cold most of the time. But it'll only be for a moment. You think you can manage that? Hmm, yes. Okay. Shall we get started? Yeah, let's do it. I'm confused. What are we doing? Well, that was really bad. Yeah. <laughs> it 
it wasn't moving. <laughs> That really was only a cold for... That really was only cold for a second. What did you hear, Doc? Nothing too bad, Larissa. But there was a faint rattle. A rattle? Like the musical instrument? Yeah, kind of. I used to play one of those in my school orchestra. But I didn't swallow it, I promise. Actually, I think it's your body that's rattling. Is that bad? We'll get this under control. Your file says you were admitted yesterday. You got, uh, some medicine, right? Then it got better? Yeah, I thought I was going to suffocate. Really scary. But then I suddenly felt better. It was crazy. I'm sure it was. We'll keep an eye on you for a bit, but there's nothing to worry about. What you went through was awful, but things will get better again from here on out. Okay, Doc. Try to make yourself as comfortable as possible here. I'll check on you again tomorrow, okay? Sure thing. Good morning, Miss Helming. You've just had thyroid uh you've just had thyroid surgery, right? How are you today? I'm very thirsty. Talking and swallowing are difficult. That's very understandable. Please take it easy then. Drinking can be a little tricky when you just had surgery. But once the wound has healed a bit and the swelling has gone down, you'll be fine. You'll be on your feet again in no time. That would be... I'd hate to have to spend the last good days of the year in here. We'll make sure it doesn't come to that. I'll change your dressings and take a quick look at your sutures. Looking good so far. Everything seems to be all right. Try to talk as little as possible and drink a lot. Okay. Talk for you standing there. Sorry, dude. <laughs> I was waiting for a prompt. <laughs> All done, Dr. Kowalski. Good, good. How was it? Pretty good, I think. All right, let's see. Everything seems in order here. Perhaps the knock to your head did some good after all. Keep it up, Finley. Okay. I have another task for you. I'm giving you the opportunity to save me some time and get to know the hospital a little better. Sure, what can I do? I need you to go to the lab in the basement. Just keep following the stairs until you get to the bottom. The door is on the right. But you can also take the elevator if you like. I've sent some blood samples to Dr. Halil and I need the results. Can you manage that without injuring yourself again, Finley? As long as the stairs don't collapse underneath me, it should be okay. Well, let's all keep our fingers crossed, then. Off you go. I need the results today. Lab, basement, Dr. Hillow. Got it.
<laughs> the hospital archives. No one knows what treasures they hide. Treasures made out of old, moldy paper, if the smell is anything to go by. That and 40 years of sales... Uh, that and 40 years of stale cigarette smoke. The graffiti on the wall. <laughs> Locked. Hello? See that red light above the door? That what? Uh, yes, I see it. Good, good, excellent. Well then? Uh, so I'm here to... You see the red light, don't you? Yes, I see the red light. A red light usually means something like very busy. Prohibited, negative, no access, or simply no. But I need the blood reserves urgently for Dr. Kowalski. Dr. Krowski, is it? I see. That does alter the parameters somewhat. Do you want to see a magic trick? I'm not sure. Yes, yes, of course you do. Pay attention. Ta-da! Wonderful, isn't it? And I haven't even stood up yet. Can I go in now? What do you think? You see a green light, don't you? It is a mole living in the basement. <laughs> All right, here I am. Whoa. What are you doing here? As outside the door, I was just talking to you. Fascinating. And? And what? The light, was it green? Yes, it was green. Excellent. Look, I need the blood results that Dr. Krawski asked you for. Ah, indeed, indeed. So why are we wasting our time chatting? Follow me, I think I have your results around here somewhere. Now, where were we? Ah, yes. The documents you requested should be just here. Keep your documents in the blood refrigerator? Of course. Saves time when matching them to the samples. I'm a great believer in shortcuts, you know? The day becomes so much more efficient if one reduces the distances between A and B. My system is simple. Cuts down on sorting and filing work, too. And now, you too can benefit from the fruits of my diligence. Well, if that's all... Oh no! Oh horror! What a mishap! That bang made my heart jump! My whole system! I... I let me just put things right, and... It'll be alright again in no time. Oh, whoa, is me! Can I help you? What do you mean? You want to help me? That makes me very uncomfortable. Oh, that happens. Let's see. Just a minute. Why do this uh why do the samples have different colored lids? That, my dear doctor, that's my sorting system. It looks complicated. On the contrary, it's easy as pie. Each sample has a sticker on the lid. Each sticker has four different colors on it. Some of the samples fell out due to the accident. Others have gotten turned around, so they're not facing the right way. You need to turn the samples around until all the same colors are facing each other. When four samples are positioned correctly, they'll make a single colored square. Once all the samples are facing the right way, you'll be able to see where the samples that fell out slot in. Quite simple. Okay, got it. Very smart. All right, let's do this. What a disaster. The samples got mixed up, but you can fix this.
You see? Fantastic, isn't it? My system is invaluable. Thank you for your efforts. I had better get back to my work. Um, doctor, hello. Was there something else, dear doctor? The results for Dr. Kowalski. Oh, right, right, Dr. Kowalski. Why didn't you say? You know I'm always happy to help, but I only have 24 hours in my day. Here you are. With my flawless system, I always have everything in hand. Enjoy. And please don't forget to close the door behind you. One needs to hear oneself think, don't you know? Here you, uh, here are your blood results, Dr. Krosky. And why did it take so long? Did the bus to the lab not... <laughs> you jerk. Did the bus to the lab not turn up? No, I had to help Dr. Khaled sort his samples. You had to help him? Yes, I... Do you see Dr. Hello? uh, do you see Dr. Hello here? Heading to the patients on the third floor. No, you don't, because that's not his job. Saint Ursula's is a finely tuned machine. If one cog fails, everything grinds to a halt. Call it a day and take some rest. Maybe you'll feel a bit more up to speed tomorrow. See you tomorrow morning, right on time, for the start of the shift. I expect to see the same level of performance in your treatments as you showed today. Got it. Have a nice evening, Dr. Kowalski. Another day done? Any trouble getting back into the groove? You were only off sick for a few days. But isn't it funny how quickly you forget things sometimes? I don't know. Things didn't go too well today. Trouble with Dr. Kowalski. I don't think she likes me. Liking ain't got nothing to do with it, sweetie. Dr. Kowalski doesn't tolerate mistakes. He's the tough cookie. So, make an effort, kiddo. Who knows, you might even learn something. I'll do my best. Have a nice evening, Ingrid. You too. See you tomorrow. Just glowing eyes. Don't know why I think that little detail is fascinating. Yeah, different. You're still here. Double shift today, I'm guessing. Spin up and treat yourself to a coffee break every now and then. Good night, Saint Ursula. See you tomorrow. I'm not even trying. The bus won't come. Will I ever see it again? This evening, isn't it lovely? The warm air that still has a little bit of summer left in it. The golden fall sun is slowly going to sleep. Ah, how wonderful. Feel the need to say something profound. Think I'll resist the urge, though.
That weird trucks. Well, here. What the? Take it easy now. I don't want any trouble. I should probably leave. Is there somebody behind me? Looks like the fountain really is broken. Or maybe they just turn it off when winter starts closing in. I hope you don't die of thirst up there. What do you want, Pipsqueak? Can't you let me smoke here in peace? Hey, I know you. You're one of that hospital gang, aren't you? One of that little busy buddy's pals. You mean, Carl? Yeah, that's the one. He needs to keep away from me. Tell him that from me. Finally clocking off for the day, huh? Yes, at long last. You're still here too, I see. So, please. I'm back here after quite an eventful day. So what now? Off to paint the town red? No, not today. I'm too exhausted. Exhausted? At your age? You should enjoy yourself while you can. Believe me, I used to be a real live wire, a young tearaway. I could still cut a rug on the dance floor. Just as long as the music's right. Then I'll have the joint shaken. Believe you me. I used to be the last one standing every Friday night. I don't doubt it, but I'll have to pass today. Morning shift, you understand. All right, all right. But let me tell you, if I slept as much at your age, I'd be even older than I am now. Still amused by the old goat. Can't wait to just flop into bed. Off to bed. I want to be on form tomorrow. Good night, world.